Okay, microphone is on, I think. The other day on Instagram, you guys asked me to show you the full editing breakdown of this photo here. How it went from this to looking like this. Now, if you were one of those people that don't like it when photos are edited a lot, then I suggest that you smack this like button and then you leave. Because we are going to edit a whole lot of photos here. So once again, my friends, welcome to Lightroom. This is the photo that we are going to work with today. And the first thing I always do is to go up here and find a good crop. So I'll click crop and we go crop overlay. And then we just find the crop that we like. Now this is gonna be in a horizontal and like an Instagram format. I like that format a lot, so it's four by five. And then we just find the good crop. If you press O here, you can get different types of these lines, the guiding lines that will help you. And I want this person here to be the main subject of this photo. So I want to place her in the middle. So basically we drag here and we keep it in the middle like this. Then I'm gonna find these ones. Let me see. She is already in the middle. Yep. And then we find this one. And then it's just playing around with the crop that we like. I think I first tried it out something like this. And I like that a lot. However, I think that she is a little bit, she's a little bit too much in the lower part of the image. I think I ended up with something like this. This is pretty nice. I, honestly, I, I go back and forth all the time when I'm doing this. Now, next, I like to click auto here. And... What this does is Lightroom comes up with, like it automatically comes up with uh, some settings that I think is good for this photo. Now this is by no means a finished product, but it's a nice starting point. And I like to see what Lightroom comes up with. And I think this is a little bit too bright for what like the image that I have in my head and like the final product that I want to create. So I'm probably gonna drop the highlights just a little bit and then go up with the whites tiny bit and down with the blacks. But all in all, I'm happy with that. So. Next, I go down to the camera calibration. Next, I go down to the camera calibration. So after this, let's jump down to camera calibration. I personally like to go first to camera calibration before I go to HSL slider, but there's no right and wrong. This is just a like my work process and how I like it. You can go first to HSL slider, then camera calibration, or don't do camera calibration at all. It just depends on what you want, okay? So recently, or like for the last few months, I've really liked this tone here. So we go minus 30 on the blue primary plus 20 on the red primary, and then plus seven here. I like what this does to the blue and the reds in my pictures, so we're gonna stay with that. After the camera calibration, I like to go to the HSL slider. I've already done them here to save us a little bit of time, but I'm gonna explain a little bit quickly what I was thinking. So I'll click here, and you can see the change that I made. I wanted to drop the orange a little bit more to the orange side, but I wanted to compensate to drag the yellow a little bit up to the more yellow. So you can see here, if I drag them down, the image just becomes too red in my opinion, especially with the camera calibration that we did before. So I'm gonna drag this a little bit up like this, I drag the aqua a little bit more to the blues, the greens, there aren't that many greens, but I drag them a little bit up here to the greens. Then the blue, I drag a little bit down to make it a little bit more turquoise. And here's a good example of how my workflow is and what I do. I basically find the slider and then I slide a little bit and see what it affects and if I like it or not. And then I continue, you know, that's that's basically it. And I'm constantly asking myself, do I like this? Is this something that I like? And, and if I do like it, then I go with it, you know. And then in the saturation here, I drop down the yellow saturation quite a lot. I didn't want that to be in the photo. I think that is a pretty nice look. And then I also dropped on the blue quite a lot. I like that in uh, street photography a lot of the times to take away a whole lot of the blue. And then I reintroduce the blues in the in my color grading. I'll show you that in a second. And I wanted to boost up the aquas a little bit to compensate for the lack of blues, boost down the greens a little bit, and then I'm boosting up the orange and reds to make those colors pop a little bit. And here I usually come back again, depending on how the photo will, how it ends up looking like if I want to boost the orange or reds even more a little bit later on. And for luminance, I wanted the yellows and like these colors here, the three colors to pop a little bit more. So uh, brighten up the yellows quite a bit and all in all I'm pretty happy with these but again I'll probably come back to them <laughs> before the end of this photo. Next up I move to the tone curve and just make a simple little tone curve here so we go and press one here one here and one here and I like to hold in alt on the keyboard it makes so that everything moves slower so if you hold in alt the whole tone curve just moves a lot slower than if I don't hold it then it just goes super fast so it's easier to be precise and also when I'm putting the notes I like to hold in alt to be precise and if you double tap you take it away so one here and then what I like to do I like to raise the blacks a little bit something like this is good and maybe Add one more here, and then we drag that one down. So what this is happening, I know that a lot of you probably know this, but now it makes that the blacks are not totally black. I have it something like this. 
I think this is good. And then let me just find the tone here that I think is nice. And again, when it comes to this, I'm basically just massaging the tone curve, you know. I'm 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 holding it in, taking it a little bit up, seeing what that does to the tone, so seeing if I like it. I also often check here. So up here you can see the the uh, nah, if you're blowing out or clipping. So for instance, if I if we drag up the whites a lot, you can now see that we get this triangle gets lit. It's telling us where we are blowing out, where the whites are too much, where we're losing information. And if you hold it in here, you can now see where it is. And if you click it, now it's permanent. And now you can see that it's this area here. So we obviously would have to raise them down again to here. And now they're not blown out. And this is something that I keep in mind all the time. Okay. And also with the blacks. But now we've raised the blacks. So we're not have, we don't have that problem. Next, let's go to the color grading. And what I would like to do with the color grading is to start with the shadows. And I would like to add a blue tone here. I like 215. And then we can just drag up the shadows to pro probably, I don't know, let's say 26 to start with. And you can see how this just pushes in a tiny little blue in the shadows and makes the image a lot cooler. And I, I, I'm a very big fan of this at the moment. And here you can even mess with the luminance if you like. Take it down just a tiny bit. And then in the mid-tones, I like to add a tiny bit of mid-tones. I also added here 2015 and pushed a little bit of blues in the mid-tones. And for the highlights, let's add a highlight that is um, a little bit orange to compensate. If that would be blue, you can see how the whole image just becomes blue. And I don't think this is that type of an image. But I want the highlights, so it's like the sunlight or, or yeah, the highlights of the photo, to be a little bit warmer to create a little bit of this uh, sunlight feeling coming in there. So 42, I think is pretty nice. And let's just try with 20. Is that too much? You can click here on the saturation and drag up and down. to See, yeah, a little bit, bit, bit too much. Maybe around 12. Let's start with that. Somewhere there like that. And you can see before and after, this is pretty orangey. And here we get it bluer and like much nicer tones in my opinion. And then you can also mess with the luminance if you like. Yeah, I think a little, little boost in luminous is pretty cool here. So maybe around eight. Nice. And then blending, we can check out and check these sliders, see if I like them. This is just blends in the colors much better. And the balance is, uh, I've talked about this before. Uh, by the way, I have a whole video that goes in depth on color grade. I'll link it up here if that is something that you're interested. But basically balance now, if you drag it to the left, now the shadows are more dominant. And if you drag it to the right, now the change to the mid and highlights are more dominant. And then everything in between. Let's just do it a little bit like this. Make the shadows a little bit more dominant. Something like this. And this, I, I I like this. So if you press Y on your keyboard, you see the before and after. And you can see that already we have a big, big, big difference here. What I would like to do now is to go down to the details. And we I like to, to sharpen the image a little bit. So let's have 50 here and add this to 30. But what I like to have the masking on. So I don't like the entire photo to be like sharp. I would like only specific parts of the image to be sharp. And if you go to the masking here, and I drag this up and you hold in Alt, you're now creating the mask. So everything that is white is being sharpened. So I like you to have it pretty high, around 85. And I can see that just these outlines, they become sharpened. The rest is a little bit soft. I like that a whole lot. And then down in effects, let's do that now. I like to add a slight vignette, but I'm also gonna, we're gonna work a lot in the masks in a second. So you see what I'm thinking about there. Let's add like a slight vignette here and we can, I like to add up the feathers. I've already done this, but you can see I like, I like this. And then add a slight grain. I like that. Just 25-ish, something like that. I think this is pretty, pretty nice. Next up, it's the masking. So first I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do a linear gradient mask here make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to add one here like this and then we move it like so and let me see the exposure drag down the exposure because what I'm doing now I'm basically closing in on the subject so I want the focus of the fo picture to be here on this person here so and and I want to create this effect that there are a lot of shadows where I'm shooting so it closes in on the subject so I do this with these filters we have one here we add another one plus and, and add another linear gradient filter here something like this do it like this and like so. And then I'm going to add another one like this here. Something like this. And you can do how many you like and how intense you like. Um, I think in the end end result, I, I, this was a little too intense. But I think this is looking good right around here. What I then also do 
for this specific photo is that I went to the brush and I'm actually going to make this a little bit more intense. So with the feather all the way to and up, I'm dragging now another one here, another one here, here, and then because I want this part to be much darker. So here, I want this wall actually to be a little bit darker and we go something like this, okay? I think this is okay. And then we take down the exposure here. And now you can see what I'm doing, okay? This is obviously too much, but let's have it somewhere around. Somewhere around here is pretty good. I think this is... I mean, I'm starting to I'm starting to like this. If, for instance, for any reason you think this is too much, you can always hold an alternate keyboard to get the an erase tool. Then you can take away here, if that is in your... Like, if that is what you desire. But I think this is pretty... I think this is pretty neat as it is looks right now. I want to add another brush because I want to make this building here a little bit darker actually. So I'm going to add one here and just darken this corner a little bit more so that is not as noticeable. Something like this and we can even darken. Is this too much? I don't know. Let me see. I think this is this is okay. Okay, next up, I actually want to zoom in on this little lady here. Or You know what? We can actually just add a, a radiant filter like this. And like overall make this place here uh, pop a little bit. So we can drag up the shadows just a little bit there. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Because I actually want to use the brush for the most of this part. And then up with the clarity just here. Like I don't... I like soft images, but I like the parts where the... Uh, where the subject is to be pretty damn sharp. And that I use uh, clarity on filters or brushes to help me with that. I don't like to clar put clarity up on the entire photo. I use the brushes and filters to drag specific places within the photo and use clarity to go up there. So we do something like this. I think this is nice. And then up with the contrast like this. I think this is okay. And then let's actually make another one. <laughs> like there are a lot of filters. I like filters a lot. And with the brush, I'm going to brush this area exactly here. And what happens if we drag up the exposure? Now, I didn't like that. But we can drag up the shadows maybe a little bit. Like so. The whites. And to compensate for that, we up with the contrast. And then up with the clarity just a little, little, little bit. And then another thing I would like to do is uh, to go on her. Make another brush. Brush. And this time around, add auto mask. Because I want to like zoom in more in her and just brush this subject. So and with auto mask on, it's gonna help us just stay within the lines on the subject. Um, like this. See, oh, we went a little bit outside here. Then it's just holding in Alt and Delete here. It does not have to be really perfect, but something like this I think is nice. And then I zoom out and I see what it happens if we take up the exposure. And I like that. Up with the shadows a little bit. Up with the whites. Contrast. Get her a little bit more contrasty and a little bit clarity on her too. And boom, she is popping out of the photo. I like this a whole lot. Now, what I would do now, I, I'll probably add a little bit more filters. One thing I would like is to emphasize on this light here. So how I would do this is to use a gradient filter, just like so, somewhere here. And then with the dehaze, drag the dehaze down a little bit. It creates this little bit of misty feeling. This is obviously too much, but just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And it creates and drag down the clarity as well. So that becomes a little bit softer. So it cre creates this like uh, illusion of a little soft light coming in here. And I, I do like that a lot. So this I think is pretty good. Now I would probably go back up here to the contrast and add a little bit of contrast to the photo. And with the clarity, I'm probably... I'm actually not dragging it down. I'm actually going to boost the clarity here. I don't do this often, but they're going to boost it to four because then we're going to soften the image within Photoshop in a second. Camera overheated there for a second. But basically, we are in the part now where I go through everything once again. Now, probably I would like to have a little bit more vignette here. So I'll, I'll add this a little bit down with the vignette here. I like that. Some of you might think this is too heavy vignette. That's cool. Then you don't do that. And then... I like this photo to be a little bit more colorful. So here in the vibrance, I would boost the vibrance quite a bit. I often like to have a it's pretty much like this. And then in the saturation, I'm either... This is too much. This is just cartoonish. I'm probably taking down the saturation just around minus one. Something like this. And God, I see now that I accidentally uh, clicked on this here. So when we made the... Uh, 
when we made all the adjustments with the brush, we didn't have the contrast from the curves. So let me see. So now this is a little bit too contrasty for me. So I'm gonna drop this down to 10. And in the curves now, now I think that this is a little bit too heavy vignette. So what I do, I just go back to it again. And then I like uh, take this down just a tiny bit. And here, take this down just a tiny bit. And then with this, we take this down just a tiny bit, like so. And I think this looks pretty nice. But basically, this is starting to look pretty good. And before and after, this, I like this a whole lot. It's punchy, it's contrasty, it's just a style that I pretty much like. So what I do now, it's time to go to Photoshop. I might stay a little bit more here and like fine tune this a little bit more. Um, maybe it's too contrast in a few places and whatnot. But for the sake of the tutorial, let's leave it at this here. Because what we do now, I jump into Photoshop. And the best way is just to right click on the photo and then go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. And then you let the uh, Lightroom and Photoshop uh, you know, transfer together and do their, you know, magic. <laughs> now, once I'm in Photoshop, I start by removing things that I don't like. There are a whole lot of things within this photo, which I think don't serve any purpose of the photo. They might be ugly. We basically have uh, trash here. I don't like it. There are some signs I don't like. There are people. So for this photo, I actually waited on this corner here for probably 20 minutes or something like that. And I was trying to get just one person to walk here in the frame. But this is a pretty, like, they're all, there's a heart of a lot of people and I didn't get it. But I knew that I can try to remove all these people in post-production. And that is what I'm actually going to do. So how you remove things, there are two different tools. There is a lasso tool and then there is a stamp tool. So the lasso tool, you basically just click L on your keyboard and then you get this little lasso tool. And now you can just paint around any subject that you like, just like this. And when you press delete, you now can have content aware fill. You make sure to have content aware fill. And then you just press OK. And Lightroom is gonna, no, not Lightroom, Photoshop is gonna like delete this for you. Now it's often better to do this in small steps, else it can look a little bit weird. So for instance, if I were to you know, take her away, I would maybe first remove the foot as good as I can, then the next foot, then the next foot, the next foot. But if you do that, it's a lot better. But this is a tedious and this takes a lot of time. But the end result and the rewards for this is fantastic in my opinion. Now the next little tool that I also use is the stamp tool. And it looks like this. If you press S on your keyboard, you get this little stamp. And if you hold in Alt and press the right key on your arrow, you can make it like bigger. So I'm pressing the right key here. You can also, of course, go up here and just change the size of it and the hardness. But I like to use this here. And by dragging up, you like change the hardness and dragging down, you change the tool. So, and what this does is that if I hold in Alt on my keyboard, I'm basically telling Lightroom to capture this place and then I can put it wherever I want. So let me put the hardness just to a max. So now I'm capturing this place and now I can stamp it on here. This is the stamp tool. And I use these tools in combination to with each other. And this takes a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it. I'm not going to do it here for the sake of this tutorial because I've already done it and it took a whole lot of time and there's no need to do it again. And you see here, this last tool, Take it like this and it's uh, it's not out of the way. This is a little bit sloppy, but what I would do then here is to press the, uh, the stamp tool. We do it like this here. And because I would like this, uh, you see we lost a little bit of the, uh, the light pole here. So we just paint it on like this and like this and maybe something like this. And this is good enough. I mean, it looks okay from uh, if you're short from close behind but if you zoom out you're not really going to notice especially on a phone now if you're doing a print uh, and especially a big print everything is going to be shown then you're going to have to be super precise with everything that you do but if you know that this is just going to be on social media then it can be a little bit sloppy you know and but yeah this is basically what I do and then i remove this uh do something like this obviously i would like to be a little bit more precise but again for the sake of the tutorial and it looks pretty good now it's not perfect here then i will use a stamp tool and i just stamp it here to make it look pretty nice like this and it looks a uh, good then i would then I, I remember i removed him and i removed her and then i removed them too and this sign here i i mean i removed a lot of different things here we also had the trash bag i removed the trash bag here like this like so i removed that boom and now that was gone and the end result of the photo, it ended up looking like this. And if you scroll back and forth, you can see here that here we have a lot of different people, lots of different things, and the end result, it looked like boom. 
and they are all uh, gone. Now here you can see that I maybe went a little bit too heavy on the vignette, but that's easily fixed. But again, you can see how many things I've removed. We have him here, the sign here, there are people here, there's a man with a dog that is just here. Maybe we can zoom in on him. Here, there's a man with a dog, there are, there's trash, there is this sign here. There were these poles up here that I didn't really like. This I didn't think was super nice. So I just uh, used the techniques that I showed you with the lasso tool and then you press the lead to content aware fill and then the, the stamp tool and then it ended up looking just like this. And you can see how much cleaner this photo is when we don't have all these distractions of these people and we just can obviously see that this is the subject. I super much like this. So yeah, I like this a whole lot. You can call this whatever you want. <laughs> Personally, I do enjoy this when it comes to the process of photo editing. Now, one more thing I did to this photo that I'm not going to do in this video, basically because this is probably already like 25 minutes long, this video, that I softened the photo with a specific type of glow that you can create in Photoshop. And you can see here how the image here is super soft and it's kind of just like has this beautiful glow to it, except for her here, because I don't want it to be on this subject, but all around it, it's pretty glowy and super nice. This is super simple to do. You do it in Photoshop and I have a tutorial on it up here and where you can take a look at it and then you get the total end result. But all in all, we took a photo from looking like this here with a little Lightroom manipulations, it ended up looking like this. Then we took it into Photoshop where we removed the distractions with using the lasso tool and then the clone stamp and we stamped things together and deleted with just making a circle around it and press delete and have content aware fill on. And then in the end, you can take the photo to look like this here. And you can see I even did a few more manipulations here. I add a little bit more color from the photo that we had in the beginning. You can see that this is a little less colorful and the end result I actually added more color to it. Made it a little bit brighter here in the, in the, you can see that, that this one isn't as bright. So here it's a little bit brighter and it's also this glow that comes here that just is beautiful. And my friends, this is how I edited this photo. You asked for it and here you have it. If you could smack that like button for me, it really helps me out. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask and comment down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.